Yeah, so hello everyone. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, all right. Yeah, so hello again and thanks to Vacuum Labs for organizing this beautiful meetup and also for previous speakers to actually talk about Bitcoin and Ethereum. And this talk will be about something else. It's going to be about some trends actually that are emerging in a web free programming. So it's not going to be about Solidity and JavaScript. And actually, I wanted to ask in the, in the very beginning, like, is there any developer who actually hates JavaScript? <laughs> yeah, quite a few, nice. <laughs> yeah, so, so this talk is actually going to be perfect for you. So, so a bit, of, bit about myself, I started in crypto like five years ago, and nowadays I'm quite a deep in Polkadot community. We actually run a, quite a lot of infrastructure over there, so that means some validators, RPC nodes, and basically any kind of technical supports for projects that are actually running on top of Polkadot blockchain. But we are also like a content creators and community leaders within Polkadot ecosystem. So we actually are like Medium and Twitter accounts where we post quite a lot of educational content about those networks. So, not working anymore. Yeah, perfect. So, yeah, so the content of this talk. First, we will start with some stats, like what are some interesting trends that are emerging for, from previous years. Then we will talk about EVM, its past and its future. And then we will move on to some alternative smart contract platforms and to application-specific blockchains. And we will also discuss WebAssembly as an alternative to the EVM and then what might be some possible future for the blockchain development. So actually, this, the idea for this whole talk is based on the Electric Capital Developer Report, which is, I would say, the most comprehensive report which is actually out there regarding the web-free development. So what they have done is actually they have scanned like over a half a million of repositories on GitHub. And actually, the summary of the whole report is over like 130 pages. So there is quite a lot of interesting information about blockchain development. And so as you can see, like like for the previous year, for the year 2021, like we are on the all-time high in the web-free development. So there are actually a lot of people coming to the web-free space. There are actually a really lot of projects that have been emerging right now. And I really believe that this number will even grow. So in 2021, actually 50% of overall core developers, by core developers, I mean developers of Ethereum, Solana, or Polkadot, of the core protocol itself, so actually, 50% of those actually came last year. And overall, there, were, there was like around 35,000 new contributors to the web free ecosystem. So I believe this is actually quite awesome. And I also believe like this is a start of a trend. And we will actually see more and more devs coming and more and more projects to be actually building in the, in the blockchain space. So I really believe this is a great opportunity for everyone to get involved. And so, as you, as you can see from this graph, like around 20% of developers went actually straight to the Ethereum ecosystem. So that actually means that Solidity is still a most popular language for writing smart contracts. But those 80% actually went to some other platforms as well. And that's something I want to discuss in this talk. And from those 80%, it's fair to say that some of them will definitely go to Layer 2 solutions on top of Ethereum, which can be Polygon, Arbitrum, Optimism, or other networks, which are actually trying to solve Ethereum scaling problems. But in regards to writing smart contracts, it's actually the same. They are also running EVM, and you can also deploy the smart contracts that you would use on Ethereum. You can use them on Optimism or Arbitrum in the same fashion, basically. But that leaves us with the competition, and the interesting thing about competition, it was rising like faster actually than Ethereum in regards to the new developers coming to those platforms. So actually Polkadot, Cosmos, and Solar or Solana, they have seen rise of developers by two, three times more than actually Ethereum itself. So I would say that's a sign that something interesting is happening, and there's some interesting competition to EVM platform as well. So, and this is something we're going to focus on this talk. 
So why even try to develop something else than EVM? Because it works, right? You know, everybody knows it. So why we, sh why we should use something else? So actually, EVM has its own issues. And one of them is being it's quite slow. Some stuff has been, I would even say, poorly implemented over there. Like, you know, for instance, handling integers, there, is, there are only like 256-bit operations, which is quite ineffective for some stuff. So that's actually one of the issues which is, which is over there in EVM. And also the other one being the security, like Solidity itself. Actually, it's not the safest language to use, and there have been many, many hacks and many, many bugs in smart contracts. And actually, some could argue that those bugs was caused by, by actually Solidity itself not being so pleasant to developers or not being so strict when you are actually developing those smart contracts. So we will discuss some chains which are not EVM-based. And actually, the focus here is on speed because Thanks to some inefficiencies in EVM, as a smart contact platform is like not as fast as it could be, and also on the security. And, and I'm going to be focusing mostly on WebAssembly, which is a very interesting virtual machine that is really suitable for executing smart contracts. But there are also other solutions that I'm not going to cover here, and actually to name a few. It can be Tezos, it can be Cardano. And actually, they are approaching this in, I would say, a bit different manner. Because, for instance, Cardano, we got like a functional programming language called Plutus, which allows you to do like form allocation and other stuff. Some applies to Tezos. But actually, I'm not so familiar with that, so I'm going to skip those. So, why WebAssembly as an alternative to EVM? Uh, like I mentioned before, there are some inefficiencies in implementation of the EVM virtual machine, and WebAssembly could be actually a really nice replacement. It started like maybe 10 years ago, because when actually Flash got removed from the browsers, then we need something really fast that would allow you to write like really content-rich applications like games and so on. And it, as it turned out, like pure, pure JavaScript wasn't really enough, like performance-wise. So then WebAssembly was invented, and actually what this allow, allow you to do is to write a low-level code in languages like C, C++, or Rust, and actually get, it code, get this code running inside a web browser. But a web browser doesn't have to be the only target. And actually, as it turns out, the nice and obvious target is actually the blockchain itself. Because you can have a WebAssembly embedded within the blockchain itself and have it, have it execute your smart contract that you can actually write in any kind of language that is supported by the WebAssembly itself. But in most of the cases, it's going to be Rust, and we're going to get into why. So, so another reason is WebAssembly is memory safe. It's platform independent, actually. That, and that also means it's language agnostic as well. And yeah, so moving on. So some examples, actually, of projects that more or less lean towards WebAssembly standard right now. I would say the most prominent nowadays is Polkadot. Actually, Polkadot is not really a smart contact platform by itself, and I'm going to talk about, about it more. But, um, but actually, the default language for writing smart contracts over there is called Ink. And Ink is a language written in Rust, and actually, it's really kind of similar to Rust as well, like regarding the syntax. And it runs within the WebAssembly virtual machine. So in the Cosmos ecosystem, that's Cosmosm. In the near protocol, there's only one option, writing smart contracts in Rust. That's, again, WebAssembly. Same goes for Internet Computer. Actually, they are using their own WebAssembly language called Motoko. So that's something else a little than Elrond. And actually, one interesting thing, that Ethereum was trying to migrate from EVM itself to, to the project called Evasum. So they were actually trying to implement EVM on top of WebAssembly. But I was trying to dig about it before this talk, and actually I'm not sure about the status, because I think nowadays the vision of Vitalik and actually the rest of the team is to focus more on sharding and layer twos than actually on scaling the EVM itself. So, so I, I suppose we won't see WebAssembly on Ethereum anytime soon. But actually, even Vitalik admit, you know, that WebAssembly is a really good choice and it's a really great fit for blockchain. And so, and why I chose this project? Actually, it was quite simple. 
I just had a look at Kongiko and, you know, listed smart contract platforms. So these are top 50, actually. All of them except the EVM ones. So we can already see in top 50, like the biggest blockchain by the market capitalization. Like really a lot of them are nowadays using WebAssembly for as their smart contract execution environment. Yeah, and so as I mentioned before, Actually, a lot of those platforms have chosen Rust as their primary language for writing smart contracts. And the reason being here, the Rust is actually one of the safest language to develop in. Like, like are there any developers of Rust? Just one? <laughs> then, then we are missing quite a lot. <laughs> yeah, so Rust is statically typed. It's memory safe, it's really performance wise, and actually, actually the primary motivation behind Rust was to get rid of memory safety errors like stemming from usage of C and C++ languages. So it was originally developed by Mozilla, like maybe 10, 15 years ago, oh, 10 years ago. And then they switched to Rust completely because it gives them the memory safety. And actually, if you have a look at some vulnerability reports and why hacks actually happens on various types of applications, you can see that like 70, 60 percent of hacks are caused by memory leaks and overflows and stuff like that. So this is actually what Rust happens from from happening. So and as I mentioned before, it's a very very strict compiler. I think it's the most strict compiler <laughs> maybe in all, all programming languages because it it really don't allow you to do almost any errors and not even no obviously not the syntactic ones but also logical ones as well, even those regarding to multi-threading and other stuff. But at the same time, while it's a kind of low-level language, it also brings a lot of color of constructs from functional programming as well. So this is kind of a nice change from, for like system engineers that are used to do their you know, C and C++, and when they come to Rust, they actually discover a whole new world you know, of programming constructs that, can, or that they can already use. So, and last but not least, it's a popularity, like regarding to, I guess all of you are familiar with Stack Overflow, but according to their, to their survey, which is there every year and is also one of the biggest surveys of developers, which is, which is there on the internet, actually six year, like for the sixth year, the Rust is the most loved language on the Stack Overflow according to its users. So there's to be reason for that, right? <laughs> And so, and why Rust and Vesum is actually a match made in heaven, because if you imagine you have to, you have to compile your, your code into the, into the WebAssembly virtual machine. And if you are doing with Rust, there is actually no overhead in terms of the runtime you are bringing, bringing it in, into the WebAssembly virtual machine. So for instance, if you, if you were doing it with Python or JavaScript, you would actually not only compile a code, but you will actually um, take the runtime of that given language to the WebAssembly as well. So that also makes it a nice fit for the blockchain development because as we know, like the um, like data and the space on the blockchain is kind of a really expensive thing, as we know, especially from Ethereum. So every kilobyte that you can save with deploying your smart contract, it can actually save you quite a lot of money. So those are the reasons why Rust makes really a lot of sense. Okay, then we are moving to application-specific blockchains. That's something we have seen in the last two years, and I would say two biggest representatives of this are Cosmos and Polkadot, and I will talk briefly about both of them. And so, but first let's talk about some motivation. Why even develop your own blockchain if you can already develop smart contracts on either Solidity or on either EVM, or maybe on Solana or Polkadot or others. So one of the reasons is actually smart contracts are kind of limited, right? There's only so much you can do with smart contracts. So imagine writing, I don't know, like social network or something like that, if you ever, you know, get into that in the blockchain space. That would be like pretty much impossible with smart contracts. It would be like really, really heavy. The gas for calling the smart contracts itself would cost you an enormous amount of money and would be really hard to do so. So, but if you have a tools to actually build a specialized blockchain for that and the blockchain would be interoperable 
with the rest of the world, meaning it could connect to Bitcoin or to Ethereum and to other networks, it actually is starting to make much more sense to develop your own. And also it makes a lot of sense because if you imagine deploying your own smart contract on the Ethereum network, it also means that you have to like obey the guest model, right? There's not much you can do about it because the EVM dictates you how the fees are going to be paid, which operations you know cost you which gas price, and as a developer you can do some optimizations, optimizations obviously, but overall there's not not much you can do about it. But if you have your, but if you have your, your own blockchain, you can actually create on your your economy. You can create your own token, and you can actually even change fees dynamically, right? Or even it will allow, allow you to create a blockchain which is completely fearless, meaning that transactions are free and the spam protection of the blockchain itself is done in a different way. So actually you can do quite a lot and definitely more than with smart contracts. Another, well, I would say the only obstacle that used to be there was the interoperability because on, for instance, Ethereum, actually if you deploy a smart contract over there, you got, you got access to the rest of the smart contracts, right? And that's, for instance, when we talk about DeFi, there is something called DeFi Lego, right? Because you have a stable coin, for instance, USDC, then you have Uniswap as a decentralized exchange, then you have some lending protocol as Aave. And if you are creating some new DeFi application, you can actually make use of those and you can compose them together and create something interesting out of that. And this wasn't actually true for independent blockchains because it was really hard to make them communicate with each other in like trustless and decentralized manner. And actually, as you might see, there were a lot of bridge attacks recently. So this is something that crypto space is still trying to solve. But I would say we are getting there. <laughs> so, so the interoperability is already there, especially within the ecosystem itself. Like when we speak about Polkadot or Cosmos, those specific blockchains can actually talk to each other in a decentralized fashion. And so just to give you two examples I've chosen, one is from Cosmos and the other one is from Polkadot ecosystem of what you can actually do with it. So some of you might know the IDX, which is a perpetual decentralized exchange that actually used to be deployed on Ethereum layer two. But then the team decided that this solution is like really, really expensive because they have still have to submit the proofs of the transactions to Ethereum blockchain because there's the layer one where the consensus and the settlement actually happens eventually. And, and it turned out to be really, really expensive nowadays. So they actually decided to move their solution to the cosmos. And then actually that allowed them to create also new tokenomics and to create new incentives for its user and so on. And another one being Fala Network. And this is actually more about like secrecy and confidentiality on the blockchain. Because when you think about blockchain, like everything is transparent, right? Everyone can see anything, like all the account balances, all the smart contract calls and everything, which is obviously not suitable for most of the businesses because they want to keep their data private. So Fala Network is trying to solve this issue by creating so-called confidential smart contracts. And those confidential smart contracts are allowed thanks to trusted execution environment technology, which is mostly in Intel CPUs, and they are making use of that. So actually, as its own blockchain, you can communicate directly with the hardware and make use of it, which is something you cannot do in EVM or any kind of virtual machine because you are shielded from the hardware from security reasons, right? That would be quite dangerous if any smart contract could actually access the underlying hardware of the, of the node that is validating the transactions. So by that, actually, you are allowed to do much more than just a smart contract. And so now it's coming the first one, Polkadot. So as I mentioned, there is a Rust and WebAssembly and then and actually one interesting feature which is allowed by using WebAssembly because the Polkadot runtime itself runs within the, within the WebAssembly virtual machine. So what this actually means that Polkadot blockchain is fully, fully governed by the community and by the voting. And when anyone actually makes a proposal about any change on Polkadot network, the part of this, the part of this proposal is actually a compiled WASM blob. 
So that means when this proposal is voted upon and the result is yes, the whole blockchain autom automatically takes this wasm blob and updates all the nodes and actually and the network is having the new version. So there are no forks, anything like that, and everything happens just through the governance. And like I said, thanks to the WebAssembly technology. Also one interesting fact, uh, Polkadot itself is written in a substrate framework, and substrate framework is something that allows you to create so-called parachain. So, so maybe let me explain the model of Polkadot a bit. Like, like I said before, Polkadot itself doesn't have any smart contracts or any kind of logic that you could use for writing application. But what it, what it actually does for you is gives you the substrate framework so you can write your own blockchain, which is called parachain. And that blockchain can be connected to the Polkadot network and actually make use of the shared security. So unlike Cosmos nowadays, you don't have to bootstrap your security via some sort of proof of stake or proof of work or whatever. But you can actually rely on the on the relay chain. This is how the main network of Polkadot is called. So we can rely on that, and it will give you the security of the network. So we can focus only on the development and only on the features you want in your application. So yeah, and there are multiple mechanisms to to do that. But you know that's like kind of out of scope of this talk. But the nice thing about that that you have the substrate framework and that makes it like really, really easy to do your own blockchain. Like, like when I was learning it uh, kind of like two years ago, actually I did something sort of similar to Bitcoin UTXO model blockchain without any mining. And I was able to do that in a couple of hours and it was working. It was really working blockchain with UTXO transaction model and it was working just fine. So, and there is, since there's quite a lot of development already, there are like a lot of libraries that you can already use for decentralized exchanges, for consensus and alternative consensus mechanisms, for identities on blockchain and stuff like that. So, so there is a ton of stuff you can already use. And the best thing about that, that Polkadot itself is using Substrate to develop Polkadot. So actually it's really well maintained and there are like a lot of new features basically every month. And since we are talking about the interoperability as well, this is done on Polkadot by the XCMP protocol. So that's a protocol that allows, that allows different parachains deployed on Polkadot to communicate with each other. And it's not only about token transfer or transfer of some assets, but you can also call logic or any other parachain. So for instance, if there's a parachain who is having a decentralized exchange, you can actually make use of that exchange inside your parachain. And like I said, Polkadot doesn't have any smart contracts, but now it's, I suppose, pretty obvious that those smart contracts usually run within some parachain. So there are actually multiple parachains supporting either smart contracts in WebAssembly or in EVM or other ones. So actually, you can pick your choice. All right, then Cosmos. That's kind of a similar, similar principle to Polkadot. Again, it's a, some sort of network of blockchains. But the biggest reason, biggest, biggest difference being here that um, blockchains and Cosmos have to actually bootstrap their own security. So there is no shared security model as it is on Polkadot. But actually this is going to change pretty soon. There's already a shared security implementation on Cosmos testnet. So um, hopefully we will see something like that within the next few months. And in a similar fashion to to Substrate, there's Cosmos SDK that allows you to write your own blockchains on top of Cosmos network. Again, in similar fashion to XCMP, there is IBC protocol that allows Cosmos chains to communicate with each other. But unlike XCMP, IBC actually allows you only to transfer assets within, within those blockchains. And yeah, and as I mentioned, the implementation of, of WebAssembly virtual machine is called Cosum Vasm. And it's actually supposed to be standard for smart contracts within Cosmos ecosystem. In this, in actually, same manner as Inc is supposed to be for for Polkadot. And yeah, I would say last thing to mention might might sound a bit scary, but on the other hand, there are a lot of projects who are there that are still seeking core protocol developers, and actually they are trying to attract as many people as they can, and they are actually providing 
lot of support actually even in-house courses like academies and so on so for instance Polkadot will have its course in, in the Eastern, Eastern Europe I think somewhere in January maybe February so if anyone is interested and especially if you already know a bit of Rust you can actually attend that course and there is like a really really high chance that then you will be hired by Parity which is developing Polkadot blockchain or any other parachain team because like I said all of them are based on the Substrate Framework, which you are be learning on the course. Ethereum Foundation is actually doing the same thing, and many, many other projects is doing the same. So if you are more into like a low-level development or more into the blockchain itself and research around it, I think there's no reason to be scared of it and you know just go and try, actually. I know some of my friends actually who didn't know like any Rust and they didn't have much developer experience. Actually, they really dive deep into it and after a couple of months, they got actually hired within Polkadot ecosystem. So, so it's really quite doable even if you don't have like enough experience. And as you can see, like I was talking about the Rust as being one of the most suitable languages for, for blockchain development. These are actually all of these protocols are written in Rust nowadays. And I would bet if someone is starting a new project in the, in the, in the blockchain ecosystem, which is supposed to be like a layer, layer one platform in a similar fashion to Solana or Ethereum to our other, they are going to write it in the Rust. Actually, the only exception in the list is being the Cosmos, which is written in a Golang. But all the others are actually using Rust. So, I suppose that's it. So bottom, bot, bottom line of this talk is actually if you don't like coding, you know, in JavaScript and Solidity and, you know, in web free development overall, there's actually quite a lot of opportunities for backend developers as well. So, so if you like Rust, if you like backend, if you like, like system languages, that this is opportunity for you. So thanks, thanks for the attention.